Uh, yeah, I really like the talk too today. And I, uh, when Candice says that we, we, we hold, uh, or we are an exact working model of the entire universe, I really like that as well. Hey. I'm, I'm a model of the entire universe. <laughs> Disastrous, isn't it? <laughs> but um, this is really profound because what it means is we have everything we need in order to recognise perfection. Um, we're provided everything we need and, and that comes in the form of our thoughts, emotions, circumstances, the people, places and things in our life. <clears throat> we don't have any control over these things. Um, we've trained ourselves to believe that we, sh we have control, or at least we should have control, but we don't have control. It's very, very clear. You've got no idea what the next thought will be, you know. And so um, to try and base our well-being on that belief system, is, it's, it's a disaster. It doesn't work. And uh, it's such a relief to be given the instruction just to relax and allow things to be as they are. So the four mainstays are just uh, an instruction set to enable you to get used to doing that. And um, <clears throat> the more you rely on the four mainstays, the more you see how genius the, that they are. They seem so simple. I mean, because they are very simple. But um, it's just the most incredible gift. And while, while we sit here discussing how balanced view and the four mainstays are spreading all over the world, and thinking about it, they are spreading all over the world, so it doesn't really matter. Um, seven years ago, when I came to my first open meeting, there was there were seven people in the meeting. It was Candice, me, uh, I think Katy and Jochen were there. It, it was a hall about as big as this in Rishikesh in India, and Candice was talking about how just by me relying on short moments, I will end starvation in the world. I will end war in the world. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, you know, this, that all sounds very wonderful. Maybe in a, a thousand years, this might be true. <clears throat> but just in seven years, the Google Analytics uh, shows many, many unique hits all over the world, including Africa. Hundreds, and, hundreds of thousands of unique hits where people are downloading uh, talks, listening to talks, visiting the website over and over again. So it is spreading. Uh, and I read a fantastic article in a, in a magazine uh, quite recently saying in, in the next five years that there are going to be an, an estimated extra two to three billion people who will have access to the internet. And these are the poorest people in the world. And the reason this is coming about is because uh, they're developing new ways of uh, transmitting data through very, very old infrastructures. Um, so uh, basically, the poorest people in the world will have access to um, broadband, basically. And computer companies are coming up with disposable computers that are very, very cheap, disposable phones. That are, that, but basically, they're giving them away. Um, and we do have people in the poorest parts of the world with mobile phones. I mean, it's crazy. They, they don't really have enough to eat, but they have a mobile phone. And they, they subscribe to the um, SMS messages. So they receive their trainings. When I was in India the first time seven years ago, um, we provided, or at, at that point I was uh, a participant, I was just helping a little bit, um, copies of the trainings to just hand out for free in the centre of Rishikesh to... Um, Indian, just in inverted commas, normal Indian people. Um, because the average Indian um, has to work probably between, I would say, 13 and 20 hours a day to get enough food to eat. Um, and, uh, and, and their pay is basically half a cup of rice and some dal. And uh, that's, a, that's a well-off Indian, you could say. And so uh, it was very clear and very heartrending to see that when we offered open meetings in Rishikesh for um, the, the people in, in the surrounding town, I remember Candice has often referred to this, at one, at one time there were about 40 women came to the meeting and they said, well, this is the only meeting they can come to because um, they have to work all day for, for the chance to make enough food for their family not to make enough food for their family, but the, the chance that they might make enough food for their family. They have to work 18 hours a day, all day, every day. 
and and it, it's it's really incredible to see, um, you know, to see this, to see we are very privileged. You know, it's 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 not a coincidence that our, the, the people that are able to look into the nature of reality do have, um, you know, all of the all of the things that we take for granted, like food and a roof over our head. Most of the people in the world do not have that. Now, the cause of that is belief in the independent nature of data. The inequality in the world is, is caused by the belief that data have an independent nature. Now that might seem very, very far-fetched to you, but when you start to, like I just to, to come back to what I said right at the beginning, that we have a working model of the entire universe in, you know, in, in our experience, so what that means is when you apply the four mainstays to your own experience, then you, you reveal to yourself that regardless of your experience, you are powerful and okay. Now that is the most amazing thing. That means that basically, if you have no food and you're dying, you're okay, completely okay and empowered to be of benefit. Now most of the people in the world, they don't have enough food to eat. They don't have a, a roof over their head. And one of the most eye-opening things that happened to me when I went to India, before I came to this training, was just how incredibly happy and open some of the most... Po I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I lived. I lived in Mumbai for a year, and there was a beggar outside where I lived in this hotel. He had no hands. He had, he had no arms or hands. They'd been, I think they'd been cut off by someone so that he could beg, basically. And uh, I spoke to him every day, I gave him some food, and, and I've never met someone so happy and so, so blazingly amazing, just amazing. And it wasn't just him, there were other beggars all lying down the street, all like bl blazingly happy. And I'm thinking, and I'm there going, oh God, I'm so depressed, I'm so fat, I, I don't like myself. And I, I, felt, I felt ashamed to be so, so self-obsessed, you know, so selfish and so ignorant of, of the potential of humanity to be okay no matter what's going on. And so the Four Mainstays allowed me to reveal that to myself. And that's basically, that is the only place that matters. Even if the entire world has enough food to eat, everyone is sorted, there are free hospitals everywhere, and you, you're still at the mercy of your data streams, then you're still going to be living in hell. Mm. And so this is very important to understand. It's only in you as an individual recognising your innate perfection that, that the world is going to solve itself, so to speak. And again, that might sound crazy, but that's the only thing you can do, is to, is to come to complete peace with yourself and everything that's going on in the world. And this is what the Four Mainstays allow, allow us to do. Now that doesn't mean that we're going to turn into a, an army of people just, who just sit there smiling, that everything's really perfect, and it, it's not like that at all. We, we have the power to do anything we want. We have the power to go to Africa and sort these problems out, but it doesn't come from the conventional approach of sorting problems out, like lorry loads of food, lorry loads of aid, coming to, to these countries. That isn't the solution. The solution is education in the nature of mind. It's, it's so obvious that the conventional approach to sorting out problems in the world is so condescending and so disempowering. We, we big white man, come with food. We, we feel better about ourselves. But, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's an atrocious, absolutely despicable state of affairs. And we have the power as individuals to completely revolutionise the way we approach humanity. You know, everyone is perfect. Everything is already perfect. We recognise that in ourselves and we cannot help but start to really affect a massive change in the world. This training is spreading all over the world. <laughs> Set seven people in an open meeting in Rishikesh to hundreds of thousands of people all over the world already. And then that's just going to continue. Pe people are open to this training. There are many, many hundreds of thousands, millions of people who only need to hear this message and the penny drops. 
And, you know, admittedly, there are hundreds of thousands and millions of people who just won't listen. But we focus on the people who are open. And basically, I remember Candice saying once that there's a, a, a low estimate would be between 5 and 10% of the world's population are open to this training. That's a massive, massive amount of people. So we need to get this training out to people, and it is getting out to people. You know, admittedly, there are places in the world where it's more difficult to, to, to get there and um, where you know, more effort is required. But it just takes one person to say, I'm going to go to Namibia and set up a balanced view centre there. I mean, that's how easy it is. That's how it works. And uh, this, is, this, is how, this is basically wisdom in action. Candice, she started training uh, as soon as she recognised the nature of reality, 34 years ago, however long, however long ago it was, she was sharing it with other people, like one to one. And she, she realised that, that you know, that's not very effective. And so uh, I think around maybe 10 years ago, um, Candice and Heather decided that it needs to get out to the world. So they, they, they thought, um, made the decision to go to India. You know, where, where are people looking? Lots of people, where do, where do lots of people go who are really interested in trying to change, you know, the world and themselves, looking for something other than just the conventional approach to life? And so she went to Rishikesh. And I have absolutely no idea why I was there at that time. It, I mean, that is like... The greatest fortune. It's it's just ridiculous. It's um, I well, I was there, and uh, if I wasn't there, I'd be dead. It's as simple as that. I'd have gone to. I'd have, I was in India. I, 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 it was a, a flip of a coin between Goa and Rishikesh, and if I'd have gone to Goa, I'd have been injecting heroin probably, because I that that's that was my my solution to all of my data. But I didn't. I went to Rishikesh and I came to the first open meeting. I didn't like it. I didn't like what I was hearing. I didn't like the smiling faces. <laughs> I didn't like someone telling me that I was perfect because I felt really, really imperfect. But what I was given was, was a set of instructions that it's up to you. You test these and then you tell me if you're perfect or not. And I was just like, I couldn't. There was nothing to argue with. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> You know, so I was really good at arguing. And so I, 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 I was, get, the, the best suggestion was to just show up. I mean, how easy is that? And I shared this the other day that my version of just showing up was I put a mattress at the back of the open meeting and go to sleep. <laughs> and it had the same effect. You know, I was asleep in the open meetings. And I, I recognised that there was something about me at the basis of my experience that was relaxed and potent at the same time. And if I emphasised that, then I felt better and better and better. So that, that instruction of just showing up, that worked. So then I tested short moments and I tested the trainings and it, I felt better and better and better. Then I, I started to serve and, and, and that made me feel even better. It was like, wow, this is great. I can, I can use my selfishness to feel better by helping other people. It just it was the most amazing thing. And then, of course, everything just settled. And so the people that are in the 12 empowerments, it's really, that's a brilliant question about not being able to speak anymore. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be in conversation with your old friends and your brain will just be like uh, short-circuiting. You're just like, you can't speak. It's just like, uh, uh, am I allowed to say that? Should I be saying that? Should I say something like uh, completely... <laughs> not able to speak, but that, that's great because you, you, you really see through the, the, the conventional um, way of relating. I mean, basically, we are chimpanzees and we're just going <laughs> like this, like, you know, talking nonsense at each other and you start to really see that and it's just like, well, do I, do I really want to be involved in these conversations anymore? But the, but the great thing is, is if you just continue to rely on short moments, everything normalises and you'll find that you'll, you'll be able to converse in, with, on topics that you're interested in. Like football, for example. I love football. <laughs> and I can talk about football with people and statistics forever. I mean, it's, 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 it's meaningless. It's absolute nonsense. You know, it, it's so unimportant. But I, I absolutely love it. And so in the beginning, when, when, when I was with my friends and we were talking about football and players, and, and I'm just... 
I, I, it's, I, it's nonsense. How can I be interested in this? Because I, 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 see, I saw very, very clearly how I was acting, how I act in these situations and circumstances. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you suddenly drop everything. It's just, it is, it is an adjustment to, 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 to just, a, all, all you need to rely on is the short moments and everything will normalise. What, what will definitely happen is you, you will no longer be interested really in gossiping and criticising. And um, my experience of being with my old friends, I, I used to work in music and film and basically nearly all of the communication is gossip and criticism and sarcasm, all of it. And so when I'm with my friends, that's still going on. And I rely on short moments. I don't contribute to that sort of conversation. And I might even say, like, well, can we just give it a break with the criticism? Let's just talk about something nice, you know? And sometimes they might go, well, who do you think you are? You, so, you think you're so clever? And again, it's not up to me to justify anything. But ultimately, I'm free to choose who I spend my time with. And when I'm with my friends now, just by me relying on short moments, we have wonderful conversations that naturally just turns to, you know, rather than criticising and judging and gossiping about someone, you just talk about how brilliant they are and what they're doing, you know, the work they're doing and how amazing it is. It's very, very empowering. You know, wonderfully empowering. This is, this is the natural way to be. So you will see through lots of things and you will see... Uh, ma many conventional relationships in a, in a completely new light. And it's absolutely fine just to not say anything. Believe it or not, people like being listened to <laughs> without somebody wanting to talk and put their viewer point. They, it, it's, it, you know, people are like, oh my God, they, I can actually talk to this person. And you, just, you can just listen to them. I, I, like my best example is with my father. All he talks about is golf and, and golf and his golf swing and golf, golf, golf. And, and I used to, used to drive me mad, you know, like, and, and, now, and now I absolutely love it. I, I can't get enough of his stories. You know, I really, I really look forward to I'm really interested in, in, his, in what he likes in life.